or welcome back to Forest Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is this is the continuation of my Take a deep breath, a photo, inspiration, collaboration series. If I'd known this series was going to take off the way it had, I would have chosen a much shorter title. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Don't panic, your computer is not broken. It's because I don't want you seeing this until much further through the film. Because... This is the latest round with the ever so gorgeous Anne. I still don't believe that woman's in her sixties. No way. Mm -mm. No. No, 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 no. No. But it was Anne's turn to choose the photo that inspired our look this time. So if you want to find out exactly what the photo is, what colour scheme we had to choose from, and more importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in a precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Welcome back from the intro. Hopefully that intro was in black and white. I've remembered so far, but you know there's going to be a time that I forget. But uh, I should now be in a glorious Technicolor. So I thought I'd give you some glorious Technicolor. Right. This is a continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series. I really wish I'd called it something a lot simpler than that. If I'd known this series was going to take off the way it did, I think I would have called it something far simpler. Um, sorry, just checking something. I am delighted that this is the continuation of it with Anne, the wonderful Anne, who I still don't believe she's 60. Mm -mm. Nah. No, 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 no. Don't believe a word of it. No. Nah. But it was her turn to choose the photo and she sent this picture here. I'm waving it thin air. The magic of the magic of YouTube. Um, this is a bronze iris that she's got in her garden. Um, so you can see there's some beautiful greens in there. There's the gorgeous sort of bluey, grey, white of the stone. And then that gorgeous deep bronzy, burgundy richness of the iris. So I think because the, if you've not watched any of my photo inspiration films before, the only rules are you can only use the colours that are in the photo. So if I wanted to put a yellow in there, I couldn't because there's no yellow in there. Um, you don't have to use all the colours though. So I think what I might do for this one, for me anyway, is concentrate on the greens and that bronze and then maybe use a bluey silvery highlight instead because I, I love that colour. That's stunning. Um, yeah, you don't have to use all the colours if you don't want to, so that's what I'm saying. I may not do the stones as part of the eye, I might make the stone colour something else on my face. You know, I might do you know, one of Jeffrey's grey lipsticks, for example. And then again, I might not. <laughs> but talking of Jeffrey, I caved. I bought it. I also bought a setting spray. And I bought the brushes. But this is the first time I'm using this, so I want to use brushes that I know how well they perform. So that I know if there is an issue, I know whether it's the brushes or whether it's the quality of this. Now, um, my channel is a teaching channel, so it's probably going to be a longer film than you're used to. because Partly because of my chronic pain, 
but also because I want people from all abilities to be able to follow. I go through things stage by stage. I, I sort of hold, hold your hand all the way through. I zoom in very, very tight when I'm doing the eye look so everybody can follow the tutorial. Now, if you're more expert than that, please feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up. I'm not going to be offended because, darling, unless you tell me, I'm not going to know. All right? But, as I said, partly with my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as I used to. Um, but also because I want it to be open for all skill levels. Right. Let's get you zoomed in. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And the eye primer that I've used is my current favourite, Crow and Pebble in shade Cotton. Now, uh, I do have a discount code with Crow and Pebble. All my discounts are listed in the description box below. I ordered a tester size, where basically you get the same size pot, but they only sort of half fill it. Uh, yeah, uh, I think you can see how well I've been using that. This is by far the best eyeshadow primer I've ever used because normally, where I've got deep set eyes, normally my primer will crease through here. As you can see, no creasing and it's not sticky. There's no stick at all. Which means you don't have to, because I, I don't set my eye primer anymore because it gives the colours more punch if you don't. But that normally means you have to sort of tap the colour on before you can start blending. No. With Chrome Pebble ones, you can blend straight away, so that's bloody awesome. Um, they do six different shades, the deepest two being a very, very deep chocolate brown and a black, so you should be able to find something suitable for your skin tone. Right, just very, very quickly, I've got deep set eyes as I mentioned. Now, I get the same issue with those that people with hooded lids get, where I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. Um, if I'm cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to go onto the upper lid and even when I'm using glitter glue I will get a blank bit right there. But I don't have hooded lids. A lot of people with deep set eyes think or are told they have hooded lids when they don't. I'm just going to briefly explain the difference for you. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile eyelid from inner to outer corner. I'm a bit puffy today because of lack of sleep, but you can still see it all. So I've not got hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lashes, part or all of your lid, that you have a hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eyelid. You can have a part hooded eye where only half of the eye is covered, or you can have a complete hooded eye. You can still follow my tutorial, you can still follow anybody's tutorial. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and just sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than I am, and you'll be absolutely fine. Now to show you what I mean about deep set eyes, they're also being, I've, I've heard them being referred to as double lidded eyes recently as well. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again tucks back away. And if I cover my upper lid, you can see again I've got some lid above the crease that tucks back away again. So that's why we get the same issues people with hooded lids get, but we haven't got hooded lids. The way that we have to do things differently is if we're putting a colour through our crease and we want it to be visible, we have to stop, relax our brows, look forward, and then see whether we need to bring it up any higher through here. All right, enough chattering. It's time to put some colour on, because this arrived yesterday but um, it didn't arrive until about one in the afternoon and I had to get a film edited to go up live today. Because of my chronic pain, I am so far behind with my filming at the moment, which I absolutely hate. But, yeah. 
So I didn't have time to play with it. So this is the first time I've swatched her, but it's the first time I'm getting to play with her. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to use my Royal England Nickel Chic Pro crease brush. It's due for a deep clean. It is clean. There's no pigment on the brush, but it's just stained. So I need to it's due a deep clean on Sunday anyway. So, so I'm going to go into Wake and Bake. Reasonable amount of kick up on that, but that doesn't worry me because you can just pick up the loose kick up next time when we want to add more colour in. So I'm just going to start off popping some of this green on. A little circular motions, like so. I love this, it's such a yellowy, mustardy green, like a khaki green. Now, on your monitor, the greens may not have looked that colour, but on my monitor, some of the leaves did look this shade. That's why I'm using it. Actually, I might take that all the way across. I like to leave about three or four mil below my brow, where I don't put colour, just so that the brow highlight stands out well. Now, greens, blues and purples are some of the most difficult colours to create. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with how this is performing. It doesn't feel like a Morphe shadow. It doesn't feel as soft as Jeffrey's from his formula. But then obviously he uses, I would imagine, more expensive ingredients. Um, but this is certainly blending much, much better than any other Morphe shadows that I have tried. And that's just blended really nicely. I'm quite surprised by that. In my mirror, there's no patchiness. In my viewfinder, it looks like I've got a lighter patch just here so for the sake of the film I'm just gonna tap a bit of extra pigment on just there I do struggle here and here because of creasing with pigment actually adhering to my eye and this side I've got super super deep creases just here which was caused when my eye was pulled around when I was a five year old at the hospital and they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. So, I am going to do a tag video at some point and I'll chat about my eye uh, in that one, I think. Right, so, Anne, this is, I think, the fourth one we've done now, I think. Yeah, I'm sure it's the fourth one. Yeah, because it's Anne's turn to choose the picture, so it must be the fourth one. Um, the first picture that she chose was actually a computer-created graphic that she'd actually done. And I was so flattered that she trusted my artistry enough with my eyeshadows to do her creation justice. Um, what I'm doing, because your eyes are not um, symmetrical, they should James Charles and Photoshop them. <laughs> I like to sit back and check to make sure that the shapes that I'm creating look the same when the brows are relaxed. So, I'm just, so you can see there's absolutely no patching at all this side, either in real life or on a monitor, so this must be my skin giving me what for again so I'm just gonna just try and just for the sake of the like I said in real life that doesn't show but it will bug me when I'm editing if I don't do that <laughs> right I've got a microfiber cloth that I use to clean my brushes on um, I prefer to use a microfiber cloth rather than a colour switch um, I find it's more gentle on the brushes Particularly if you've got natural hair. And this isn't. This is a synthetic. 
but if you've got natural hair bristles, colour switches are not not kind on them at all. Right, I'm now I'm going to go into Night, which is a really beautiful bright green. Look at that. Ooh. I'm just going to sweep this across. That's lovely. And I'm going to blend that up the eye a bit. I'm not going to take it too high up because I still want that original khaki colour to show. Plus I'm choosing some of the most difficult shades from the palette. Just to see how well they uh, perform. Yeah, see again on, on camera I'm getting patching just here. But in real life there's no patching so I'm just going to have to pat that pigment on there I think. Obviously my, my eye must be having a particularly dry day. I'm going to go and do the same this side. Yeah, I'd followed Anne for quite a while because I just love some of the stuff she does. Love, love, love her personality. I think she's great. Um, genuinely had no idea she was 60. I thought she was closer to my age, sort of, you know, 45. I thought she might have a couple of years on me. I thought she might be sort of 48, 49. But to find out the woman is 60, I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. What's your secret? It's like, did you find the fountain of youth? You know, did uh, Nicholas Flamel give you a something that, you know, extended your lifetime or whatever. Harry Potter reference. <laughs> and um, she'd commented on one of my photo inspiration films how much she... I always get more fallout this side because the skin on this eye is looser where it got pulled around so much when I was a kid. I'm just checking that I'm getting the same shape both sides. I'm going to bring this side up a little bit. Match. Yeah, that looks better. I'm going to take to there. Um, she commented on one of my films. I really love this series. It's great fun. I love seeing... Because part of the whole point of it is that two people using exactly the same photo can be inspired by different elements of the picture. Like for example, I'm not going to use the stone colour on my eyes. I'm choosing to use it as the highlight colour instead. I'm, co I'm concentrating on the green and the bronze of the iris. But, you know, Anne might do something completely different. She might do a bronze smoky eye with a green and grey lid. I mean, that that's... That's the beauty of this, that, you know, you're all, everyone is in, everyone sees different things in the same photo. I started the series because I was always interested that you see beauty gurus all getting the same palette and yet nine times out of ten you don't always see the same looks. They were drawn to different colours in a palette and I thought, well, you know, rather than do it on palettes where if you've not got the palette you can't do it or you know you, you have to go out and buy the palette which maybe you can't afford. I wanted to do it on a photo because then you can use whatever you've already got in your collection. That was just a bit of my cellar water by the way just to clear that up. This is a Royden Langnickel eyeshadow brush. Again the Chic Pro range. The difference is, when you look at it from the end, it's oval rather than being round. So it's great for getting right in the crease there. Because I'm going to go in with, um, I think, what's the T? And if that's not dark enough, I'll add a little bit of vroom vroom to it. Um, yeah, it just, because, yeah, it's not going to be dark enough. I wonder if actually drive-through will work. That's actually a shimmer, but it might. Let's try drive-through. 
Oh, drive through works. Just to deepen up that outer corner a little bit. Um, yeah, it always it fascinated me that people were drawn to different elements. Um, especially when it's it's a picture, so you, you've got fewer colours to inspire you anyway. Um, and so far there's only been one occasion where the looks have even been vaguely similar. And even then, they weren't the same. And um, Anne commented on one of my films that she's really enjoying the series and she hopes that I continue to do it. And I said, well, all the while people are wanting to collab with me on it, then I'll continue to do the series. Next thing I know, I get a private message on Instagram. Uh, can I collab with you then? And if you've watched the original Bitches of Eastwick film that I did, um, you'll understand why I said I wasn't actually asking people to collab at that point in time. Because I'd had a very rude knockback from someone which annoyingly so many people think is such a nice person. And I'm like, yeah, you, you haven't seen the other side of her, have you? Um, she's not a nice person at all. She said some pretty horrific things to uh, Anya and Nona as well and that's why we became the bitches of Eastwick so I wasn't really I was waiting for people to contact me to say could they collab with me rather than me reaching out to people because my confidence basically took a huge knock because I don't collab with people I don't look at how many subscribers they've got and oh could they be good for my channel I don't look at that I look at whether I like the person and I like the personality and that um, I think that people that follow me would enjoy watching them too uh, because if I enjoy watching them then there's no reason why they wouldn't enjoy watching them you know and it's I just so I was going through a phase of not asking people, so the fact that she actually messaged me saying, can I, I was like, oh my goodness, yes, please, thank you, that's awesome. So, yeah. It, I always say, if I won the lottery, which would be difficult because I don't even play, but if I won the lottery for some unknown reason, um, and I could sort of book a private jet rather than fly on a normal sort of airplane where crammed in like sardines and I just oh no oh, 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 oh. I need to get up and be able to move around plus because of my back because oh, if I sit too long I just lock up and not good. Um I would go to America and I would love to just hire a huge great car like a was it the fifty three caddies that had like the the, t the, the, the fin lights at the back that look like rocket lights. I'd, I'd want to hire one of those and just basically drive around America and go and see all the people that I've watched on YouTube and collabed with and thoroughly enjoy. And, you know, if, if we lived closer, they're the kind of people that they'd come round, we'd all sit around the kitchen table with coffees and basically put the world to rights and play with each other's makeup and stuff. And Anne is absolutely one of those people. She would definitely be on my list. Um, she's a lovely woman. I just I hate the fact that we're separated by so much distance, you know. Right, got Morphe M three two one here, and I'm going to go into the shade Calabasas, which is this gorgeous. Actually, it's the same colour as my car at the moment, although I'm changing my car at the beginning of September. Because being a mobility car, every three years you have to change it. As soon as it comes ready for an MOT, the you have to change it for another one, so that you're guaranteed, a, you know, you're, you're guaranteed a car that's less likely to break down, basically. But that's the colour of my car at the moment. Mm. Right, um, so that I can see what I'm doing, but so that you can still see what I'm doing, 
because I can't close this eye because of that one being blind, I'm alright if I'm just blending, but for actual placement of shadows, mm -hmm. I've got a little mirror which I should be looking down into here. So I'm going to go in with this Calabasas. And this is a, a matte shadow. You see, I don't mind breaking the rules. I'll put a shimmer through the crease and then a matte on the lid. This is actually quite nice. Whenever I'm testing out a new palette, I don't tend to cut the crease because I want to see just how well the pigmentation is. Just how, how good it is, you know. To see whether it's deep enough to cover the shades above it. And this one absolutely is. Stunning colour. I'm really liking this. I think it's pulling up that bronze iris colour absolutely bang on. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to fluff the edges with, what was it, drive through. Just to sort of blend the two colours together on the edge there. That's nice. I give the brush a quick clean so I get any dry through off of it. Now with my eye this side I do have to stretch it out when I'm putting colour on the lid because otherwise the the shadow fills up that crease but it isn't packed in there, it's just loose. And then through the day as I move my eye and blink and whatever I end up with the multicoloured freckles which if that's the look you're going for, great. If it's not the look you're going for, not so great. Look, I'll show you what I mean. If I put a mark just there, right, which is above my pupil, look how far it stretches out. It comes right past the edge of my iris. That shows you just how deep that creasing is in here. And like I said, that's damaged from when it was pulled around when I was a five-year-old. So, 40 years ago, I didn't really start seeing that kind of depth of um, creasing until I hit sort of, I don't know, 38, 40. That's when I started to really notice it. And of course the problem is where I now have to stretch the lid out, that of course, you know, pulls on the elasticity of it even more so that it you know, just gets deeper and deeper each, each year goes on so that's why I said don't pull your lid out like that unless you absolutely have to so again buffing that colour together there I can show you so much easier on this eye where I can close it oh that's a striking a lot actually. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and uh, sort out some of this fallout and uh, put some foundation and stuff on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off so you're going to see me instantly and I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. I am back. Hello. I to go for the same colour brows because I've got a pigment pomade in burgundy red from Revolution Pro. Perfect, <laughs> absolutely bloody perfect. And now I'm going to oh, I need to do the under, I need to finish the eye look off, don't I? I'm getting ahead of myself. Right, so I'm going to go back in with this flat topped brush. I'm going to pick up some of Vroom Vroom, which is the grey in the palette. I'm just going to run this along the lower lash line because it's quite a dark grey. It's a lot darker than the actual majority of the stone. So this for me is sort of the shadow of the stone from the picture. I'm just going to run that. 
I always flinch this side because the number of times I have to edit out me poking myself in the eye and my eye streaming and me having to stop and sort it out and then rectify the mess it's made of the makeup and deep joy. And then I think I'm going to use one of the greens to buff that out with. Right, the brush that I just dropped that and it's just done a ding right in the middle of one of my blimmin... Urgh. Just dropped the brush and the handle went ding straight into one of the pans in this palette. Oh, don't you just hate when that happens. Right, this brush was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes and just getting a good old blend out. So I'm going to go into What's the Tea, which is the green that I decided wasn't deep enough to go through the crease. I'm just going to buff that all along the lower lash line just to blend it out and soften it slightly. I must admit I'm really surprised with these Morphe shadows. I did not expect them to perform this well. Obviously I've only used very few shadows from it. But greens are greens and reds and blues and stuff are, are difficult to create, so I have kind of gone straight in with the most awkward shades to start with. But hey, you know I mean, when do I have to make my life easy? Okay. Just want to get a little bit more emphasis on this side. There we go. Right now the brush that I use for doing my highlighter on my brow and my inner corner is actually a lip brush and I bought this from eBay probably 10 years ago now but it is perfect and I'm gonna go into um, I'm gonna go into welcome very first colour in the palette You see that's like a like an icy white. So that's part of the light bit of the stone. Just popping that up under the tail of my brow there. And then I'm gonna go into custom rims, which is a slightly more silvery colour. So more of a grey of the stone. I'm going to put that around the inner corner and bring it under the tear duct and just blend it into the colours that we blended under the eye there. You can just leave it at the inner corner there but for my shape eye I find that just bringing it under the tear duct really does give it a very flattering shape. But just do whatever works best on your face, basically. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to bung a highlighter on my face. I'm going to bung some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair. And I'll be back with the final look. So... Please don't go anywhere, because it's going to be instant for you. I am back. Right, um, just so you know what I used on my face. The foundation is one that I'm testing at the moment, so I'm not going to tell you what it is, because I've got a new way of doing foundation reviews. I test them for about a week or so before I do the full-on review, so I can give you a more in-depth um, review of them basically to let you know whether they work best with this primer, that primer, etc. Um, 
set it obviously with Coty Airspan and Translucent Extra Coverage. That's my bay. I've got so many different setting powders and I keep going back to the Coty. I love it, love it, love it. Um, this is my absolute favourite bronzer. Look, I've got pan on my butter bronzer. We can't get that in the UK, so I have to order it from my iHerb or Amazon Prime. Because if it's Prime, it's shipped by Amazon, and I believe the seller has to prove to Amazon they are genuine articles. Uh, um, the blush is Hummingbird Hype from Wet n Wild. It's a slight shimmery blush. The highlight that I went for was Diamond Lily from Wet n Wild which I've been assured is a dupe for the silver one that Rihanna did. So grab yourself that, much cheaper. The lippy is one of Jeffrey's summer collection, as we've got Jeffrey here, I thought it'd be appropriate. And this is glazed because it's kind of a... So, so I've got fluff on it not Jacqueline style fluff that I recognize this fluff it's from my microfiber cloth it's um it's like a gold but it's got like a pink shift to it because when you look really closely at the photo underneath the actual flower you can see where um, I'm assuming part of the the bit the 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 statement that oh the stuff was on the outside of the bud before the flower opens um, has gone like a sort of beigey kind of colour so I thought oh, okay we'll do that for the lips you know and I did my did my silver highlight here and some grey here and you know white there so I think the only colour I didn't use was brown for the earth really um, but I did use a dark grey instead, which is the shadow of the stones on the earth. So, what do you think? There's the picture. Oh, and also I thought, you know, what the little red flowers on this would uh, pull out the red in the eye as well. Mm. Actually, this is quite a Christmassy look, to be honest. Red and green together. Mm. So, yeah, what do you think? Oh, the mascara is the Essence slash Princess in green, by the way. And the setting spray. This smells amazing. It's weird though, because it's like you, you can't actually feel it on your face. I get the feeling I'm going to go through that really quickly. And it's not cheap. But I wanted to get it just to try, because everyone raves about it, so I thought... Mm. And this one, it's, it's more expensive than the, the, the standard black one. I don't think it's because of the scent. I think it's because he said he had he added uh, more moisturising into this. That it... Uh, <laughs> it just says controlled and oh so refreshing application. Flawless, but I'm sure he said when he was um, announcing this on his channel that it's got sort of moisturising, uh, conditioning ingredients in it, and that's why it's a little bit more expensive. Only buy about two quid, but yeah. So, what do you think? How well do you think I've done? Do you think Anne will be happy with the look, seeing as how? It's her flower that she's grown in her garden. The pressure. Oh, the pressure. Um, I'm actually really interested to see what she's done with her look. Uh, so while you're watching me, I am going to be watching her. Now I've got to still film the intro for this, take some photos and then go and edit it. Um, but... Now that you've watched me, if you are one of my 4F babies, please first double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. So just check you're still subscribed and your notification bell is still on. And then please shoot over and watch Anne's video for me. And, uh, you know, be nice and kind and supportive to her the same way you are to me in my comments. 
But if you are here from Anne's channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm a slightly scatty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird living in the south of England, living with chronic pain, uh, fibro fog, mind wanders lonely as a cloud, and uh, occasionally comes back and says something interesting, and then it just wanders off again. So, you know. Like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get in one of my films. But I have been assured that my voice is soothing and I can actually be quite amusing. So I really hope you've enjoyed this film. Um, if you would like to subscribe and ring my bell, ring my bell, I would be delighted to welcome you to the 4F family. If you're not quite sure, I've got an awful lot of other films you can check over and watch just to see whether you can put up with this crackers bird waffling at you about makeup. Right, that is quite enough for one day. I'm not going to give you my review of the palette because I'm going to be doing a separate review using that. This is about Anne and her photo. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.